have made it to our next mission here in Madison, Georgia. This is Source of Light Ministries International, and their main number one purpose is discipleship. What they do is they print and uh, also manage Bible studies, tracks. They actually have a area upstairs for like advanced studies where you can actually earn an associate's degree. Really great place. And we are happy to be here and show you more about it. My name is Ron Barnes. I am the CEO of Source of Light Ministries in Madison, Georgia, and uh, we want to welcome you to our Ministry of Discipleship. Uh, we have been around for nearly 70 years as a discipleship ministry, and, and sometimes people uh, get a little lost in the word discipleship, but we're really convinced that the Great Commission uh, is making disciples. And so even though we're involved in church planting and theological education and evangelism and literature development and distribution, uh, medical ministries, children's ministries, orphanages, hospitals, etc., at the very core of what we're here to do, the ministry we're involved in is discipleship. Uh, when we were established nearly 70 years ago, we discovered that there was a need for good and solid discipling materials and for now nearly 70 years we've been working to develop that and expand the courses so that the people that are coming through our training, our discipleship courses, are well discipled. Uh, we are used by a lot of mission agencies, a lot of churches, in jails and prisons, by a lot of partner ministries, and by our 37 branches that we currently have around the world. Here in Madison, uh, you can imagine it takes a lot to be able to see the ministries around the world be supplied with their resources, but also held accountable, and uh, to receive the training and the encouragement and so forth that uh, running a, a ministry on the field uh, would require. And so here in Madison, we have a variety of departments that help our troops deploy uh, if if you wish, and, and uh, so we have everything from uh, a maintenance department that maintains our, our homes on the campus. We have uh, many acres of, of homes we have uh, for volunteers that come in here and serve. We have for some of our own missionaries some rental housing, uh, as well as the operation of, of our main office buildings. In our main office, we have uh, administration and then in the and, and then in the second building we have we have a whole publications department with a printing area a warehouse a press area and as well as layout and design and so these buildings require a tremendous amount from our operations teams which gives us a lot of opportunities for people that are coming and desiring to work with source of light short term uh, there's anything from uh, carpentry or landscaping uh, to uh, more spe specific and specialized things, uh, electrical work and plumbing and, and that type of thing. Uh, of, of course, there's always projects for people that just say, I just uh, I don't really have a particular training or skill, but use me to move you know uh, rocks from one pile to the other or, or clean up dead trees or uh, help us dig a ditch it's just with a sprawling a sprawling grounds like we have in a building like we operate it just constantly requires a tremendous amount of help well we also have our publications department that requires a lot of help in, in processing some of the the curriculum our pressmen are quite often overworked and so they could use uh, of course full-time help but also short-term help that would help us uh, collate some of the courses to get them all shrink wrapped and then put onto the onto our shelving unit in the warehouse 
Uh, we have opportunities for volunteers that could come and serve in that capacity. We also have a uh, need for people who help format the courses in, in our division that's called pre-press that would, for example, use InDesign to be able to put the courses into uh, formatted or reformatted versions. We also have, coming into the main building, uh, we have opportunities for people who like to do office administration. Uh, when, you, when you run 37 branches and have the accounting for all of them, uh, there's a lot of paperwork, a lot of paperwork that needs to be constantly re reviewed and revised. We're looking for people that even help us with the systems that we're using. Uh, we use things like Google Sheets and Google Forms uh, to create uh, opportunities for online uh, collaboration on people's reports and that type of thing. We have a video uh, and, and uh, audio studio to do some recording. Uh, we, of course, are always looking for help for people that would like to be a part of audio and the audio and visual, as well as our web design team and uh, social media. So there's uh, plenty of opportunities in those areas. We have uh, a Braille department that uh, constantly requires the assistance of, of people who are looking to be able to uh, just use their time. It, it, it doesn't take a lot of training. It just takes a lot of people, a lot of hands. We also have a department called our training department that resources not only our missionaries around the world, but even our missionaries and, and office staff. We've discovered that uh, many of our office staff have been far more productive in their area of responsibility by learning how to use Word more effectively, by learning how to do things in Excel, creating tables and so forth and and suddenly their prayer letters look better and their their forms look better because just a little bit of training but to have people that know how to use software that would be productive that would help our, our productivity a little bit uh, we could use a lot of training for our people in, in that area we're also looking at the other element of training which is our uh, our missionaries around the world who constantly have training needs, whether it's teaching Bible or leadership or theology or pastoral ministry. So uh, individuals that would want to go and serve one week or two weeks overseas and of course uh, potentially utilizing the resources that we now have and we've discovered that uh, we can all use online. and so. Uh, creating those courses online would also be a possibility. So you can see around Source of Light we have a lot of opportunities for people that are looking to use their abilities and gifts uh, in the ministry, but the number one desire, the number one ingredient we're looking for in people is people who just want to serve. You might not even know where you could serve, but give us an opportunity to be able to, to, to look at you and see you know, how you could volunteer and, and I will tell you many of our volunteers that have showed up here not knowing what they have what they were capable of doing or that in ministry or in missions there was a need for some of their particular skills they have found a place to use what they thought perhaps was an unusable or an obscure gift they've been able to use here quite effectively in the ministry so I hope that you'll give us a try come visit us and see where at Source of Light you might be able to plug in God bless you. They had to have a way to reproduce those Bible lessons, so they bought this used mimeograph machine and it was so filthy, they actually dropped it in a vat of diesel fuel and let the diesel fuel eat all the gunk off of it. And then they began producing Bible lessons on that in a farmhouse right down the road here.
and Kim Thigpen, and we have been at Source of Light Ministries International for almost four years now. Uh, but we didn't expect to be here. It uh, it was a surprise to us when it when we visited here and how it all came about. We were, we were taking a trip one summer, and on our way back from visiting family, we decided to stop by Source of Light. Um, Kim had an old family friend who serves here and continues to serve here in the Braille department. And so we just wanted to take a half a day trip for the kids to, our kids to do kind of a little short term mission trip and work in the Braille department helping to put together the material to send out uh, for discipleship for those who, who can't see. Um, and so we spent the half a day here and we discovered that Source of Light did a lot more than just printing discipleship material. Um, and what really uh, caught our attention and pulled us in is that as we served overseas, we were really sold on partnerships. Partnering with international believers who were serving the Lord, who were accomplishing great things, and together we could accomplish greater things. And we discovered that Source of Light is partnering with international uh, pastors, ministries, believers around the world to help them accomplish their ministry in a more effective and in a broader way. And that, that just excited us and so we started looking into Source of Light, and actually it was just 30 days later <laughs> that we put our house up on the market and we were planning to move down to Georgia to join Source of Light, which we did. And uh, I joined, I, I stayed in for a little while, uh, learning the ropes, and became the uh, CFO uh, as of January of 2018. And my wife, Kim, is the literature coordinator here at Source of Light as well. And we've just loved to get into Source of Light and what we're doing, serving people in the U.S., um, prisoners, other people, VBS, uh, churches working with kids in VBS, but then the international partnerships. Um, but it's just amazing to see how much is accomplished, how many students are being discipled, how many people are being saved, how many people are being pulled into ministry with their local churches and local opportunities with so few dollars. And the secret is partnering. One of the things I really love about this ministry is the relational aspect of it, of course. Our, our courses go out. It's not just print a bunch of courses and throw them out at people. But you have the courses and they have a response, like a test, a question, answer. And it comes back to the person. And they are assigned to a person who then responds back with the next course. And they develop a discipleship relationship. And that goes out to our branches. We've got over 40 of those that also run all these individual associate schools. We have over 7,000 associate schools all over the world. It's very, very exciting. To us, it's... It's such a joy to think about, with our limitations, thinking we were shut down. God sent us here instead, which isn't something we would have considered back in the day. But now we're actually part of reaching millions more people than we ever could have when we were over there where I thought we were doing something significant. And as a homeschool mom, I love being part of this ministry too. My kids come over and they help. They help in the Braille department. Sometimes they help in accounting. There's all kinds of different ministries, stuffing envelopes, things they can do. We've had other students come in and help us with projects. There's wonderful opportunities for volunteers. We have people come as far away as Pennsylvania every year to come and just help out and be part of this ministry. It's an exciting thing to think. I, I kind of think of this ministry like a lot of little loaves and fishes and you come and you do a small part and then God takes it and goes and does something amazing with it. So honestly, at this point, despite our plans to be here and here and here, God changed our plans and rewrote them, and I wouldn't choose to be anywhere else. I'm really, really grateful God sent us here and love what He's doing, and I love being part of it. It's very exciting. You should come check it out. So here's the thing about Source of Light. Not only is it a great place to come here and serve and really be involved with international missions, uh, it's a great place to come and visit as well. So as you're staying here and you're serving and you're really getting connected to the mission that they're involved in, they actually have a wonderful facility and some awesome grounds here. And we're gonna go check out a lake that they have here on property that has like a fire pit and some boats and stuff like that. And we're gonna show you some of that just so you guys get a feel of some of the grounds around here. It's really a great place and we would invite you to get in touch with Source of Light Ministries and see how you can get involved.
Our time at Source of Light Ministries in Madison, Georgia is coming to an end. The facility is wonderful and they're reaching so many people. The facilities, the grounds are absolutely glorious, but the people have been amazing. Yes. So our contact here was a man named Hugh Gerald. He's a former, uh, not former, uh, fellow <laughs> member of Campers on Mission. And uh, it was really funny as we were coming uh, into Madison, Georgia, I was calling him on the phone. I was like, hey man, we're in town. Where do you need us to park? And over the phone he says, go behind the building and find a white box truck and just park next to that. Stressed him out for about five minutes. Yeah, I was like, oh, well, we're just gonna be in a, in a parking lot. And it's like, well, oh well, I mean, it, it'll be okay. It just wasn't, wasn't ideal. I was like, oh, bummer, you know, I was hoping for uh, something a little nicer, you know? He was and hoping for something exactly like what we have. <laughs> yes, so we end up getting here and come to find out there's the white truck and then you turn like this and there's where we park our RV, backed up, up, backed it up in there and when we come out you just, we're backed up to like this humongous field um, that is, so basically it backs up to a farm, right? And it just looks like you have this humongous backyard all to yourself is what it looks like. So uh, the grounds are beautiful. We're actually, you can kind of see here behind us, this is a lake that they also have on property. And uh, down here they have like a little pavilion and uh, a fire pit, boats, boats. Uh, <laughs> that my son is currently putting a hole in. Um, anyways, and uh, swing sets, anything, all that. So it's just, it's a great, uh, great facility. Actually, absolutely great. So, um, but I did want to speak a little bit about the kind of people that we met because this is obviously an international, international missions. So uh, I know that on this channel we tend to focus on domestic uh, because that's you know where we are. <laughs> uh, but they do international. They have 37, right? 37 locations all across the globe. So we're talking many different. Uh, excuse me, many different languages. Uh, I remember Hugh telling a story about the like four or five different versions of French that they have to worry about. And it's just stuff like that you don't even think about when you're talking about holding a BBS you know, with your local church. Like you just don't think about that kind of stuff. Um, I was able to sit in with Hugh as he was making calls for uh, customs and getting these uh, pallets and pallets of Bible studies and tracks and all this stuff into Africa and all the customs people that he has to deal with and it's just it's just amazing it, it's just crazy it's way bigger of a facility than i ever imagined yes and these people definitely have a heart for it oh, yeah. uh they uh this is just what they do you know um they they like to focus here that there is no such thing as a as a job or a skill that can't be used for the kingdom Right, uh, so you, let's say you want to do computer information systems. Right? You want to be an IT person, right? Well, you can do that for the kingdom. There, there's plenty of IT work that would need to be done right here at Source of Light, you know? So um, I think that's what I kind of wanted to end this video with was the, the idea or the, the character of missions that I think we tend to have. You know, we, we tend to always think that missions involves going out and, you know, feeding orphans on the streets of Africa. Is that part of it? Oh yeah. Absolutely, that's part of it. But missions could also mean sitting at a computer in Madison, Georgia, writing emails, answering phones. Um, all of that is mission work and it's equally valuable, you know? Oh yeah. Um, so I just, I don't know, I think I just would really like for us to just understand that missions is, is more than what sometimes we seem it is. Well then, I've got two examples even of just because maybe you're physically hurting. Mm. There's a story of a blind lady who has been mm. serving here for years that takes their daily devotional? Daily bread. Daily bread and turns it into braille with them. They co she comes once a week and helps um, translate this to braille. And they have quite a few people who monthly get this braille daily bread. The size of it. Yes. yes. We're talking about a daily bread. bread that's, you know, six by three turns it in, you know, a quarter of an inch thick turns into being an eight by ten that's over an inch thick binder. printed yeah. binder printed on both sides. Yeah. It was just amazing to see how much work and how many pages it takes to make a braille. Yeah. But, you know, she she was born, or born blind or been blind most of her life and she is still using her skills for the glory of God. Yes. Um, and there's, there's plenty of people around here that uh, 
like, kind of the same thing because uh, there's volunteers and missionaries here on site that are are getting older, but man, they are just still hitting it. You know, they're just still hitting it. Uh, but they're, they're definitely looking for volunteers, and that's one of the reasons why we do these videos is so uh, hopefully it gets in front of people that would see this and be like, man, that looks like an amazing place to go and serve. Uh, maybe, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not comfortable going overseas. I'm not uh, comfortable with what we consider traditional missions, right? Traditional miss mission work. Uh, I don't really feel like <laughs> uh, going and planting a church, right? Like, that's not my thing, right? Uh, but this could be. But I can answer a phone, you know. I can I, I can run a spreadsheet. I've opened Excel before. I've opened Word. You know, I know how to do that kind of stuff, right? Uh, yeah, maybe this is the mission for you, right? Uh, so, just well, go ahead. And obviously, there's there's links in the description of this video uh, for Source of Light and all that. I just would encourage you guys, uh, please reach out to them, and I'm sure they can find you a home here at Source of Light.